We'll call the meeting to order uh, at uh, 6 05. Um, now we look for uh, okay. somebody that wants to be chair. Um, right? Is that first? Or you want to do that? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Our first order of business is uh, reorganization, and I am requesting nominations for chair. <laughs> you want to be chair? Sure. Okay. I nominate Katie to be chair. All right, wait a, wait a second. second. Okay, wait a minute. Okay. So far. And that was Bob and Maureen. Is it Maureen? Yes. Yeah. Great. Uh, and then all in favor? I. Okay. I do. Katie, you are now chair. I'm and chair. you take I get over. To run. <laughs> yeah. And now we need to take okay, vice so. chair. Vice chair, do we have a nominee? Can I get a nomination what for is, vice um, chair? What does a vice chair do? Vice chair, vice chair. Oh, oh, okay. second in command. If, Should if the Katie's chair not the, be if, here, yeah, yeah, exactly. then the vice chair would run the meeting. I nom I'll nominate myself for vice chair, I guess. I you can, but then, if you can nominate yourself. Yeah, I, I can nominate. You okay. can nominate Bob. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. We don't, we don't do secretary. We don't really do a secretary usually, but because you're the secretary, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but in case, okay. in case you know, I get wrong. I nominate those. Maureen to be our filling <laughs> secretary when when we have when we, when Lynn's not here. I will second that. All in favor? Okay. Um, and then. We need a frontier representative. So this is the one, one of our board members that goes to the frontier school committee meetings. So Bob has traditionally been there. Would you like to continue? Sure. Yes. So I'll nominate Bob. I second. All in favor? Thanks. Okay. Um, do we need to vote on the Union 38 representatives? Um, or is it just it's just welcome we Maureen, yes. who was voted as our representative, right? Or do you have to? Is that just school committee members, or is that something? What that means is, for instance, next month and on, on April, we will have a joint school committee meeting. So you will be at that meeting with 24 other okay, school committee yeah, members, and you'll be representing the union. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, everybody will have a big meeting first, and then it breaks off to, to the little yeah. meetings that you've seen before. Frontier do their business, try to do their business first, and then it goes off to the four other towns, and Lynn... And Patty try to jump between the four of them and, yeah. and do their business with us and stuff. So, okay. So, That's, do we you know, nominate and vote ourselves to no. be the representatives? That's voting. No. Okay. We just fill in Maureen in the vacant spot. And then okay. So then there's three other um, kind of committee jobs. Yeah. I think you. Just, I've been I, the collaborative. I, I think you just. What's the proper word? Do I appoint someone? To you just appoint. You just appoint okay. people that would like to, to the, take these exactly. On. So I've been the collaborative representative. I don't, Maureen, if you might be interested, it's a, a good way to learn more about the other school districts, and it's a month, a meeting like once every quarter, maybe. Um, I'm happy to continue. But I don't. I, I also don't offer it up as a way to, unless Bob has nope. something you would like to do. No. Nope. I'll help you with the do other. Do you want to do? Yeah. I'll stay you with. You were the policy person. Yep. Before. I'll stay with the policy person. Okay, and I'm happy to do the capital planning. Yep. That'd be okay. great. So, yeah. so I'm the collaborative. So you would be the collaborative, right. Maureen. And that's like, that's every. I think it's like every three months or something. They have a. They have meeting. a. Meeting. They have a dinner too. Yeah, you get dinner, which is <laughs> nice. <laughs> but you meet a lot of other school committee members, and you, you would be sort of a board member of the collaborative okay. by taking on this role. And the I can help you learn yeah. more about that. It's in Northampton. It's the Collaborative Educational Services, and they provide a lot of support to what we do in, in our different districts, and they support Hampshire, Franklin County uh, educators, and they offer a lot of uh, support, um, professional development. We actually are working with a uh, Title III grant through them. We don't have enough ELL, English Language Learner students, in our district to get that money, but we do have a number. We don't have a hundred, but we're, we have quite a few. So we join in through the collaborative with many other districts that have small numbers. Orange, uh, Pioneer, uh, 
different different other members of the collaborative and so we get it's probably a sixty thousand dollar grant and we get a piece of that mm -hmm. because we're joined in this consortium of um, the school districts yep. and it's it's really okay. interesting so it's, yeah. it, I think it's really good we, you know we pay a small a very small dues every year to this as a school and it really does help us with different programs and gives us a lot of help and stuff so. resources yeah. mm -hmm. sounds good okay so I think we've set we don't have any negotiations coming up in the next couple of years, do we? Ne next year, but not next now. Year. But okay. policies, oh my! Yeah. Oh, we—they just finished redoing all the policies in 2016, and then over the course of last year, uh, actually, there's many others that are coming down the, the road that need to be changed. We have quite a few that need to be changed. Some are just simple words, where the old language was handicapped. We now use the term disabled. So those we'll just change, but then there's others that we really need to look at what the Massachusetts uh, Association um, of School Committees is recommending. They've already written a template and changed the pieces that need to be changed to keep up with the law. We're going to study it in policy committee and decide if, as a school committee, do we change it too for us. So there's a few. There's, there's, there's a few. Um, you know, there's no great rush, but... We do need to start working on that, and so that's great. I'm needing to ask every school committee uh, to be a part of it. We have four, one for each town. In the I was on the last policy uh, committee represented from Waitley, and it was, let me tell you, yeah, when we started with a book, we went and started with the policy book here, it went down to here, but these other ones went over to... Procedures. Procedures, and yep. we went through some sections some sections were we could knock out a couple in an evening or a morning but some of them were so we have about this many now that have to be redone but it most of them are very slight it's just that you know boston keeps changing the you know adding and doing their you know business of making laws and we need to follow suit as a district and there's a digital version of it too yeah, it's on is, our yeah. website yeah. Yeah. makes things a whole lot easier so when, when we make the the changes we when we agree as a policy a committee we bring it to the school committee and once we all agree then we send it to them and they'll update it on our website but right now we're working under the school committee policies that we used to get a book <laughs> new members get a book <laughs> as you left then you turn it in and i never know whatever you happen to mine but <laughs> But there, you got a book that Someone's was huge. Oh. Not killing as many trees. Ah, that's true. Not many <laughs> trees. The, all everything's digital. So, mm -hmm. wanted, did you have a question? Yeah, I wanted to suggest earlier this week um, the issue of school committee representatives to the sick bank committee came up, and um, I know the last couple of times that uh, that there was a request for sick bank time, which we can explain in a moment, um, that we called you, and and it does say in the in the contract that you have the opportunity to appoint somebody but technically the sick bank committee is two members of school committee and then two members of the union and I don't know that because it happens so infrequently mm -hmm. that I don't think you've ever designated two members of the school committee but technically there should be two of you um, and you can designate that role so that did you, if a did request you guys comes get the up, email this week by chance no, I, I think so um, you, so we didn't you didn't forward it so if you wanted to so I, I can talk about it just in general. Yeah, it's just in so general. Yeah, name names. Yeah. But the way sick bank, uh, the the way the union contract works, and thankfully we have the union president here in case I don't get it right. But there is language in the union contract that indicates that if a um, if a member of the union has used up all of their sick time, uh, that they can make application to the sick bank time. Mm -hmm. So if somebody has a chronic illness and um, and they've used their sick time. Um, union members can donate some of their unused sick time to mm -hmm. that person. That process, initiating that process, requires approval mm -hmm. from a committee of four, if I understand it correctly, two members of the union and two members of school committee, mm -hmm. who simply say, yes, proceed, essentially is what it amounts to. They, they, you, know, they, you get told a little bit about the situation, and then you approve that, that this person, any person, can go to the sick bank committee. And the last couple of times it came up, 
it hadn't been designated. So, so Bob said, I'm in favor of it, and Pete, I'm going to designate you to be the other person. And I said, well, I'm in favor of it. And the union yeah. said, okay, let's go ahead and allow this person to request sick bank time. But technically, it should be two members of school committee. So do they just meet when it's needed, when someone yeah, has a need? Yeah, it, it doesn't even require a meeting usually. It can just be a phone call or an email saying such and such a person is. I only can remember two times in the last. Yeah, it doesn't come up very often. And, and it's been, you know, and, and Pete emailed me on. Thursday or Friday, asking me about it, and I sent and sent back to have you guys hear about it. And uh, I said it's fine with me to point Pete as a representative to get the, the ball moving for the uh, for the individual. So. And that's that's already happened. Okay, so that's good. good. In this case, it's already done. But again, because the language says it right. should be school committee so members. So you you wouldn't be a ballot member then. Is what I, you're saying. I, you, like, you are allowed designate to designate you? somebody, uh -huh. but again, the language in the contract says that two school committee members are part of the sick bank committee. Yeah. So you can disappoint two people, but if Maureen and I are there and, and Pete sends both of us an email and we're not available to go to the meeting, Pete can be a representative as the two people. If you need one. Yeah. But, but usually it's just a matter of saying, you know, yes. giving approval yeah. that... that you know, you can initiate the process. Does that sound right to you, Jen? Mm -hmm. Thank you. In this case, this week, I told I told Pete I had no problem, like I didn't have the last time when this happened, and I was more than happy to let him be our, yeah. our designee. It's, it's a wonderful thing where peers can help out their peers in need. Mm -hmm. We do have FMLA, but that's after your sick time is used up, yeah. it, it, it's unpaid. Your job is safe. It will be there when you come back, but after you use your sick time. <clears throat> so when your peers can offer you their sick one of their sick days, mm -hmm. and uh, you don't end up losing income, it's it's a wonderful yeah. thing to yeah. do. And it's I've never seen it taken advantage of. And and but I think that's what the con you know the CDA says that you meet and discuss it. But it's always warranted. Yeah. I think, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. So these are teachers donating across the different schools? It's not just Wheatley, or is it no. within each school? I think it's just... It's within just each school. So it's within each school. Yeah. yeah. Each school has its own sort of sick bank. I see. Yeah. So you can okay. point so two people if you want. I mean, yeah. Whatever, but, you want to, whatever you want to do. I don't know. Just make it the chair and the vice chair that are sure. the members for the time being, great. and that way we yeah. always know That's who great. it is, and Maureen can be the backup if we now. need someone else. Okay, thank you. All right, let's... Okay. Well, glad to help you. Thank you. Okay. So we have the minutes to approve. Is that... Yep. Are we done with the reorganization? Um, the minister approved, and Maureen had emailed a question, which I'm thinking Patty is the right one to answer, yeah. about the I'm going to defer breakdown that. of all this money. So should we just defer the voting of the minutes until then, or should we vote sort of the minutes, barring any clarification of my that? My advice would be these notes um, reflect what, what we talked about at the, at that at the time. committee at the meeting last mm -hmm. time in public, we, we agreed to this. Whatever the numbers are and whatever, um, if you email Patty, always make sure to email everyone so that... I did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. And then we're all... She can answer yeah, it then for it's, everybody. Yeah. 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 And Patty will answer that. It, okay. It's a question yeah. of $3,000. Uh, was it spent or not spent? My... And, and what I said to Maureen is, um, it looks like it could be just an addition error, but I don't know if we have actually paid that $3,000 yet because it's for the first year's use. We mm -hmm. haven't used it all mm -hmm. the way yet. And my other, um, my other comment on that is when we, when we make plans for the summer work, they're estimates. So we estimated this and this, yeah, these really jobs will cost a certain amount. And when the bills come, sometimes they're less. Sometimes one might be more, one might be less. But we do have a finite number of dollars to be used at the end of the year. And Patty will be able to speak to that and okay. much better. I mean, there's a couple things that we could do. It has a lot to do with the questions here. We can um, put the minutes off till next, next meeting to, to approve them. Or next time. Yeah. Or approve them. I mean, especially if there's going to be some 
amended, amended things to it so we can put the minutes on hold until Patty comes back, get the answers done. If we have to change something in the minutes, we get them changed. Right. But or, we can also, yeah, go ahead. Or, or we can just uh, approve them. Um, but if there's, if there's going to be some changes, I rather, I personally rather wait to approve the minutes until we have, make sure the minutes are right. Right. Or I was wondering if we approve them sort of as written because these are the numbers as Lynn was saying that were discussed okay. But then yeah. we could ask Patty to update us on what were yeah. the real numbers yeah. And then we I can have that, that in our sort of next minutes yeah. that To reflect the reality because I, I do agree that these were sort of estimates at the time right. and we're not really sure Exactly where they ended up. Yeah. So the minutes are accurate, but the numbers may have changed. Right. And I can give you an example yeah. of one that I know about that did, and I'll get to that. Right. So I'd rather not yeah. like worry too much about the numbers at the time, but focus more on what was sure. really spent. Does that make sense? So Maureen, you weren't you weren't on the so committee at the time. So no, you I can't wasn't. actually vote for yeah. these minutes anyway. Right. <laughs> I was we, wondering about that too. Yes. So it's just but you could like. But you can ask questions. To your email mm -hmm. or the next meeting, you can ask Patty or ask her oh, through an email. Yeah. yeah. Because you're on the board so now fine. and stuff, so we, you and I, would what is staying, we can vote for the minutes as read, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So do you want to make? I'll a make motion a motion to, to accept the minutes from June fifth. Um, I'll second. All in favor? Two or one. Or one. Yep. Thank you. And, and you, then we'll be sure to yeah follow up with Patty on the. And I'll write as read. And um, that question will be answered. Did you want me to re-sign with a blue pen? <laughs> if it was something really, really, really important. I, I guess if it was going to the state. I guess to the town of Waitley, it's okay to do that. Yeah. The state, we like blue. Huh. Okay, so financial statement. Patty sent us the statements for the, via email. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything to discuss without her. On that. Um, I noticed she only sent the one fund for the full year. She didn't send like the school choice fund or the other funds. So I was going to ask her to resend those mm -hmm. to everybody so that we'd get kind of the full picture. Um, I can put that in a note. Okay. She did send the, all the funds for the first mm -hmm. month, two months, yeah. or whatever it's been mm -hmm. so far. And then the year end. Yeah, so the year end. I'm, I'm, I'm positive the year has been closed out. I would think that she would have. I think she just probably forgot to include them in the report. Then you can have these back, too. Thank you so much. Is there anything to comment on in the year end from your perspective? But typically, typically we, get a, we get a printout of it, but Patty's not here tonight, so we don't get up a printout. She emailed it to uh, us. I've, did you get that? No, I didn't. I probably. You talking about these spreadsheets? Yes. Yeah. There's yeah. one that is year ending um, June yeah, 2017, and then there's another one just for the month of from June to the end of August. So, again, this is where we would see the extra money at the end of the year, potentially, mm -hmm. although there's also an accounting entry to get rid of the surplus. So, it's a little. Funds are encumbered in that one. Funds are encumbered in there to cover these um, estimates. The final estimates on those. So they kind of take any money left over at the end of the year and put it aside for people to use. Um, one thing I was going to suggest working with Patty on is trying to come up with more of a summary report because it's very hard to read that report mm -hmm. as a sort of more casual user of it. Um, and so it might make sense for us to have kind of a one page that we think, can really reference I think Patty more did easily. It. I think Patty at Frontier helped us where if there was a particular overage on a particular line mm -hmm. item, she would keep this on another separate piece of paper for us at Frontier. Mm -hmm. and so we would know that, yeah, we already discussed this one and this one and what this one is. Mm -hmm. So if something else came up new, she would add it to a list to show us what's been going on, why it's an overage, somebody out, out, out sick or, or the bus scheduled, we need an mm -hmm. extra bus, but that's how that's how she did it at Frontier because okay. we would have a lot of overages. And then a lot of underages that yeah, would exactly. balance each other out. So yeah, I sort of That's would right. rather not get into all the detail myself. I'd rather just know yeah. overall how yeah. they're doing. Yeah. I think that that's sort of Pete's job and Patty's job to manage that. So Kate, I heard you say if there's some, and I do think Patty's the best person right. to summarize <laughs> it, but if you look at that uh, 
second or third paragraph of the minutes from the last meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that all yeah. of the things that she mentioned that money would be used for, nothing got cut out. Okay. And in fact, some things were added. Okay. Because as she did more of the math, you know, our meeting was on June 5th. And as it says here, you know, a projected amount less the es estimated bills, leaving approximately this. And I think that as the month went on, um, you know, the numbers, uh, the numbers showed that we could spend a little more money. That you had more money. So not, and when you hear my list, I'll, I'll point out to you okay. one of the things that I know we added. But again, for specifics, I think you're absolutely right to wait for Patty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's the one. But in general, that paragraph there, everything that was included in there, um, is being pursued or has been pursued. Right, because like based on this one report, there's still 30,000. Mm, yeah, 30,000 that's kind of left in the fund, if you will. Oh, I don't think it but would be that But she's much. probably been moved that somewhere else by now. <laughs> or we haven't got the bill for it yet, right. or the invoice. Right, is that? Yeah, no, and that's... I'm pretty that, sure it's all... Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure she made sure that we spent yeah, the money. I mean, what little here. is left sometimes, I think, is returned to the town. But, I, right. again, I can't speak to that. But, but I can I also, tell you what projects we did do that, that, would that be we good. discussed when we get there. Yeah. But I want to be mindful of kind of where we end up because if we're asking for more budget and then we end up with money left over, that's sure. not necessarily a sure. good thing. But it's good if we can spend it on important projects. Right. Mm -hmm. I've walked around tonight with a few of them. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, very nice. Okay, so we need to... Find the warrants, but it looks like the, you guys yep. know that, so that's great. Um, public comment? Is anyone here for public comment? No? no okay. okay, so we'll move on. Um, unfinished business. So there's a discussion item about student transportation. So last June, when you look at the notes, we talked about uh, the student transportation policy EEA. And what we wanted to do, what we wanted to do was to be more true to our practice as opposed to what was here. And we talked about grades K-3 students will not be released from the vehicle, meaning the school bus, with, unless a parent, guardian, or designated caregiver is present. So the bus driver needs to see if it is a child under the age of eight years old, needs to see or under the, under the age of third grade students up into second grade we never know the age yeah. but needs to see an adult to take care of that child up into third grade right yeah. until they're yeah. in third grade yeah. at that point they get to go off and get into the house and the parents don't come to the door or will come out to this the bus stop what we have been doing though some parents have been asking us or saying listen Susie's in, in fifth grade now she could just walk Mary home with her it's fine we live you know right there I can see it from the house I don't need to come out but it wasn't specifically articulated in the in the policy so now we're asking we asked the school committee in June to allow us to add that in the words or sibling in grade four or higher with parent or guardian approval so if a person, a parent has a student in grade four, not three, but four, five or six says, can we send the child home, you know, just send them to walk up the, the hill with his sister. It's fine if the parent approves. We're asking that the school policy be amended to say that. And so we need a vote on it. So moved. Oh, well, let me, May I okay. ask a question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the, let me just, yeah. I guess maybe this will clarify if I'm the one who's confused, but the minutes from the last yeah, meeting I, indicate that we've we already had this that. vote and approved you it. You guys talked about it in June, I remember. I thought we voted on it and approved it. We did? Yeah. No, I don't know. Did, not, did they say that? It well, was the notes, in the minutes. The minutes I say that, under, that with Pete. That's why minutes, I was a little confused. Yeah, the minutes say that under new business, this is from the last meeting, there was discussion mm -hmm. on an amendment to policy EEA, student transportation, grades, K students, you know. I'm a day, I'm a day behind. I Thank think you you've already done it. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. I thought I thought we. Thank you. Mm. Correct, I know that sometimes correct. you said you wanted to think about it. We think about it to the next meeting. But this right. maybe, I think we didn't maybe think. Decided, I remember it wasn't really anything we. Maybe was we decided not to think about it because it was all, it was. Right. It says Pretty motion from Bob. Made sense. Yeah. Second yeah. from Katie. Um, okay. I will. The we need. I must have brought it forward in May from the last uh, because I do need to, I have to put the vote on, I put the discussion on one month and then the vote the next month. But thank you very much okay. and I apologize right. for that. Oh, that's good. So is this going to be the same for all schools? Just curious. Oh, it is, it's a district yeah, policy. It's a district policy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It will be. I have yeah, to get approval like from schools. Us. 
No. We talked about it in June at Frontier too, the same okay. same thing. So Okay. Thank you very much. So um, summer building maintenance. All right, that's you. Um, so you should have in front of you a list that looks like this. It says summer maintenance twenty seventeen. And what I would like to do, with your indulgence, is to just read through the list, and I will annotate a little bit verbally as I go through the list, and if you have any questions, maybe hold them till the end, and you can take notes and then ask me any questions you may have at the end. So what I do each year when I give you this list is, I don't include all the regular maintenance, so to speak, you know? I'm including the things that we got done this summer that were maybe projects that we agreed on, or, or things that don't happen every summer. But uh, so my first line says the following are repairs or updates conducted above and beyond routine summer maintenance. So as some of you have already seen, and if you haven't, I strongly suggest you go down and look because it looks great. Um, we did three classrooms um, where we pulled out all the carpet and installed tile. Now, getting back to some of the things we talked about with money, the, there was an approximate cost of about $4,500 per classroom. Um, we ended up spending $14,500 because we chose to do the two biggest rooms and the foyer between pre-K and K. Those are the biggest rooms in the building, and then we did second grade. So again, these were approximations, so rather than 4,500 for three classrooms, which would have been 13,500, we ended up spending 14,500, and did, and did pre-K, K, the foyer in between, and then second grade. Which is also the bathroom, right? The foyer is the bathroom? Yeah, the, yeah that, those bathroom areas, uh, and it's the pre-K entrance. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also in pre-K, there's a cabinet uh, and counter replacement that's still in progress. Um, all the carpets in the building this summer were cleaned by a commercial vendor rather than using our machine. What we discovered is that really our machine is more of a spot cleaner. So at least for this summer, we brought in a commercial vendor to clean the carpets well, uh, and disinfect them. And as you know, um, we have a plan over the next few years to, to remove the carpets from the building and replace them with tile a little bit at a time. That's where surplus will come in handy at the end of the year, Katie, yeah. <laughs> if we can keep going in that direction. Um, um, another section of the kitchen was painted. Last summer they did a portion of the kitchen. This summer they did a second section. There's still some walls in the ve very back of the cafeteria kitchen that need some paint. Um, there's a control box, um, the, the industrial dishwasher in there, that was rusty and you know, getting to a point where it was uh, dangerous because, you know, obviously it's a control box with electrical uh, material in it and we didn't want that to continue to rust away. So we were able to repair that ourselves, refurbished it. Um, all of the serving tables, when I say serving tables, I mean the big counters that they serve behind. Those obviously get cleaned every day, but they, they you know, every now and then they need to be broken down and scrubbed. They're mostly stainless steel. Some of them have hot water to keep food hot. And so they get scale on the inside that needed to get cleaned out. All of that got done, you know, top to bottom this summer. Um, we painted the third grade classroom this summer. Uh, that's Jen's classroom. Um, and the other rooms that got paint were the rooms that, uh, that we did the tile in. All of those were painted as well. Um, not only did we do the asphalt shingle in the garage that you guys were aware of, but there was enough money to replace the garage door this summer. So now there is a power your door and the old door that was just, you know, really beat up and is gone. Um, we also removed a tree over the garage. It was part of the problem was that the tree was older and, you know, we didn't obviously want it to fall on our new roof, but also it shaded the, the garage roof so much that it, that's why it was growing moss and getting, you know, all that on it. So a tree was taken down. Again, this is all in-house. I'll point out to you when it's not. Um, uh, here's an outside service. We had a little bit of trouble with our septic tank alarm. That came right at the end of the summer. So some of you who dropped off kids probably saw this man in the white suit oh, yeah. just as buses right. were arriving being lowered down into our septic tank, <laughs> which made people wonder if we had a septic problem on our first day of school. We didn't really have a problem with the septic system. <laughs> septic system's working fine. I want to assure everybody. But the alarm, um, the alarm part of it was, was faulty, and that's been repaired. Because <laughs> the alarm was going off, and we called our guy to come in, and he said, there's no problem with your, with your system. It's the alarm that has a problem. So that was repaired. Also, our walk-in cooler, the refrigerator side, um, the floor was really rusted out and becoming a problem. Uh, so we rehabbed that floor, you know, um, sanded out, scraped out all the rust, repainted the floor, did, did some work on the walls in there. And while we were in there, we also serviced <clears throat> uh, the, cool, the cooling coil was cleaned up nicely as well. 
if you walk around the building again, we're going on a 30, you know, this is almost a 30 year old building in a couple of years. And a lot of the door jams and casings near the floor, especially the exterior doors, have developed rust from moisture. And so we're working on getting um, all of those that we can do painted, uh, sanded and painted. But some of them are going to need to be replaced because they've just got so much rust that, um, that they can't really be uh, repaired entirely. But we did a lot of those this summer and still working on those. And then door closers, just like the ones you see on top of those doors. Also, over time, these are original ones, and they've started to wear out, and doors weren't shutting appropriately, they weren't catching the latch. Those are important to fix, of course, for safety updates, because when you when a door shuts, you want it to shut all the way. Right. We have had experiences where even during a lockdown drill, a teacher shuts the door, turns the lock, only to find out that the door didn't really catch, because it just didn't, wasn't matching up. So we try to pay attention to those and get them done when we can. Um, and then, again, some locks on various doors this summer were repaired or replaced. Um, and uh, everybody who comes to the pancake breakfast will be happy about the next item. That um, every, some, every, every time we did pancake breakfast, we blew fuses or, you know, or breakers popped. You know? So now we have new circuits added, and um, that should no longer be a problem. And those circuits were added for both outlets in the kitchen area and outlets out in the cafeteria area. So we should be able to plug in all the coffee pots we want this year without system overload. Also in the teacher's room, um, a new, I showed Bob a new, um, a new four, four prong um, outlet that was installed and things were redirected to different breakers as well uh, because we were also popping breakers uh, when we had too many things running in the teacher's break room. And then uh, or throughout the course of the summer, various repairs to different parts of the sprinkler system, which I'll get back to in just a minute. And then there's a few things that we didn't get to this summer, like um, our sandbox needs a little bit of repair work. Um, in the winter months, when the plow goes through the yard and when we have a backhoe come in to remove snow that's fallen off the roof, we're learning. I mean, the roof is already eight years old, but each year we're learning that we have to be careful about certain things. So if I have an excavator come to take the snow away, we have to clearly mark where everything is so that we don't tear down our gardens or break up a garden bed. And same thing with the town plow. I think the town plow must have hit the snow, must have pushed the snow over towards the sandbox and broke one of the plastic things on it. So we want to repair that. Shed we've been talking about for a long time. I think it needs to be removed and replaced. But we, again, this summer we had so many other things we didn't get there. And the last one is a fun thing. Kids want a Gaga ball court. And PTO has been talking about doing that. And Andy's been uh, you know, roped into trying to help build one. But it just didn't happen again this summer. So those are still pending. What is a Gaga <laughs> ball for? Game. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a round area that has like a fence or something about this high and they have a ball and they have to I, I don't really know it's exactly like dodgeball in the, yeah they have to hit it a closed but, area and you're out if they get you from the legs down or something yeah. you're not supposed to hit them above that and but they love it my son loves it yeah wow played it I couldn't at explain Cubs it to anybody here, here has one in Conway it's a small court for a game it's really probably the whole thing is as big as our table here yeah. but, but wow. we're going to build one kids yeah. they learned about it at they nature's classroom right? and a, lot of a couple the kids of our have local schools so if I google it and, uh, oh yeah okay, yeah we'll find it's pretty popular it. yes what about, you talked about getting a snow blower is that on the list you know I would have to ask what where we stand with that okay. I don't know if it was purchased or maybe it's already in the garage I don't know Katie okay just my neighbor keeps telling me it's going to be a bad winter because so, there's so much fruit everywhere. So I want to make sure that we're ready. <laughs> so I can ask about that and get back to you. What I do want to also add though to to this tonight is that over the past weekend, we've um, we've encountered. Um, an issue with the sprinkler system where we had a leaky pipe. So the good news is that we have a system now where an alarm tells us if our sprinkler system is losing pressure. We get an alarm that tells us about it, and then we can, you know, try to find out where, why we're losing pressure, and find out where the leak is. And we've had good success, as you know, in the past, of just finding that pipe, taking it out, replacing it, and we're good to go. Um, just about two weeks ago, um, around the 22nd of August, so maybe about three weeks ago, uh, a worker removed a pipe, and we found that there was a lot of corrosion inside the pipe. Um, so, of course, that prompted us to be concerned about if there's corrosion elsewhere in the, in the pipe system. I can tell you that last April, HFP, Hampshire Fire Protection, did an inspection of our whole system and found no corrosion. So we passed that inspection, but then we found a pipe that had a fair amount of corrosion in it. So it alerted us to that fact. 
and um, because it's a safety concern, obviously, with our sprinkler system, uh, this coming Thursday, we, we actually motivated uh, or activated our, you know, a lot of people very quickly. And this coming Thursday, um, we're going to meet here, uh, the town administrator, Brian Domino, the president of HFP, who does all of our sprinkler work, is going to join us. I don't know the gentleman's name. I'm sorry, well, maybe you do, but HFP, HFP guy. Uh, William Rhodes. He's the president of HMP. Bob Lesko, our plant director for the district, Dr. Carey, uh, John Hannum, our fire chief, myself, and the building inspector who does our building, Mr. Cerrone, are all going to meet on Thursday and discuss the best way to remedy this problem. There are apparently remedies, uh, including a chemical flush that shoots out, you know, that clears all the corrosion in the pipes. Um, but I think in our particular case, we need to discuss the best approach because we know that some of the pipes are pretty new and some of them are very old. So um, we're going to try to put a bunch, a bunch of somebody's phone. We're going to put a bunch Mine's of heads a quack, together. But I shut it off. Mine's in my office. I have a family member who passed away. So, so we're going to have all you know all those folks around the same table and discuss the best way to proceed. Because right. at the same time, um, uh, we learned uh, over the summer that we had to submit several of our sprinkler heads for inspection, and because they're over ten years old, they didn't pass inspection. So. Um, so we have to replace all of the sprinkler heads. So if you bring those three things together, right, we're already replacing all the sprinkler heads. We know that we have a system that's been faulty in the past, and now we found a pipe that had some significant corrosion inside it when we thought we had passed that test. Um, so I think it's just a good time for everybody to talk about this and decide how we're going to proceed and what kind of money we're going to spend. And that's probably all I can give you right now because, mm -hmm. you know, the rest will be decided when we meet on Thursday about the best way to proceed. I mean, I think it could range from is it time to overhaul the whole system to is there a flush that we can do annually to keep things going? Do we find all the pipes that haven't been replaced and replace those? You know, I don't know what the answer is going to mm -hmm. be, but we'll keep you posted. And as you know, or as you heard, you know, everybody who needs to be a part of that, including from the chief to the building inspector to the people who do the work, plus school administration will be involved in that meeting. So I, I'm optimistic that we'll come up with a, a positive solution. And, uh, you know, obviously all those folks are aware of that concern. So have the sprinkler heads been replaced, the ones that we talked about before that no. were supposed to be? Okay. Not yet. Not yet. That so was you were in the, the process do. of doing that? Yeah. Okay. And at this point, I, I imagine we're not going to do anything until right, we decide, until we what decide more holistically yeah. what to do. Exactly, Katie. Okay. That's a good way to put it. And that's it for um, my summer updates. So if there's anything else I mentioned that you had questions about, I'd be glad to try to What answer. time is the meeting on Thursday? Should Does it make sense for any of us to be there? Or not that You're I'm welcome. It's 10 o'clock. It's 10 o'clock okay. here. And uh, what we're going to do is the outcome of the meeting will be a timeline mm -hmm. for addressing the problem. A timeline and looking at the most critical pieces first. So prioritizing what needs to happen with a timeline so that we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. But uh, Pete did some detective work and discovered that we were uh, definitely uh, well within our, uh, our due diligence. We've had four quarterly in the last year, four times last year we were inspected. Uh, the last that we've made, the district has been wait, making a lot of uh, right along. along the way. All of those recommendations have been done right along, and then we got to get pretty much a clean bill of health in April with some things that needed to fix and be fixed and then right up until August we were right on track and then uh, this pipe popped up that uh, they had already said there's no corrosion and then they found one that did so clearly they're not going through every single pipe but mm -hmm. they're, they're making an estimate too when they do the inspection but we, uh, we have all the heads together at the table on Thursday, and we'll come up with a timeline of uh, reasonable action mm -hmm. that will uh, get us. And the cost. Yeah. My understanding is this could be a big number right, yeah. at the end of the day, which is Something really we'll the have challenge. To, we'll have to go back to the town and bring it to the town. Potentially. Oh, Brian's going to be, Brian will Brian be there, so he'll bring yeah. it to, I think, very likely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because those things are just the nature of the beast. It's hugely expensive. Okay. I can speak to summer programs, which is to really tell you we okay. don't do a lot of summer programs here, except we did Camp Invention this uh -huh. year, or Invention Camp, and it was outstanding, just, uh, you know, just terrific. <laughs> I had no role in putting it together or creating it. Who did? Um, 
uh, our teachers from Sunderland to um, help me here because uh, the fourth Carmody. grade teacher Donna Carmody, was one Donna Carmody yeah. and um, oh, and Celantes, yeah. and and then, Celantes um, yes, get off, get a lot of credit. The sixth grade teacher, I know. Oh yes, yes, gentleman. Yeah, what's his name? Um, I know it too. Not if, no, 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 no. The sixth grade teacher at um, Ryan Ryan Copeland. Ryan Copeland. I think it's Does that Copeland. Sound yes, right? Ryan Copeland. Ryan Copeland might be yeah. right. So if we have the names right, those three people get the credit. <laughs> Take it off. But it was outstanding. You were here for All some of it. All three of my kids were here and they loved it. They oh, were yeah. so excited. I'd come, come and see mommy. Come see. I did this and so and so did this. And How many kids were there? <laughs> a lot. A lot. There must have been forty. Was it a whole week? It was yeah. a week. It was not the full day, but it was a good amount of the day, and they just loved it. Was there a charge? Yeah. Okay. But it was it was very reasonable. Yeah. So and how did great. that come about? Like, how did that program get put together? It's, I, it has been a great. It was a big success. The district has been partnering with the Hitchcock Center uh, for about a year and a half to develop, a, you know, a new focus on science and the new science mm. standards that are coming out. And this kind of um, our elementary curriculum coordinator, with the help of some teachers, they just put it together and they thought, well, we do reading, we do math, and you know, but what about science to really engage the kids in something that is uh, off the beaten track? Some, you know, so many children who just love science. So they put a curriculum together and they presented it and we decided to, to run it and see how successful it would be. Uh, there was a great article in the newspaper mm -hmm. in the Greenfield Recorder. Uh, Andy came and he really enjoyed spending time with the kids. And the, uh, the crew we had just a very, um, very engaging and uh, comfortable group. I mean, when I came, I came several times and the kids just really got right into the routine on the first day. They knew where to eat. They they knew what to do. They all had they had so many different kinds of projects. Each day was a different function of mechanics and physics. And then they had a culminating um, show at the end where they videotaped their their big project. And they went out to like the music room where it's kind of empty. They used tables here. They were in the hallway. They were outside. That pit down there was just full. It was full of Legos, Legos. and yeah. there were there were um, matchbox tracks all over uh, the room, and, and so marble tracks, marble tracks, tubes with marbles going through them. Those I mean, little machines oh, they uh, made. yeah, the um, Rube, yeah, yep, Rube, Rube Goldberg, Goldberg. Yeah. Rube Goldberg <laughs> yeah. inventions, yeah. and you might have overheard a conversation that sounded something like this, like, well. My ca the car I made is too heavy, so I'm trying to figure out how to make it lighter so it can do what I want it to do. And I decided that maybe instead of a pencil for the car axle, I could use a straw and lighten the weight. I mean, beautiful, critical thinking conversations. It was mm -hmm. awesome. Right. Awesome. So will they do it again? Or I, I sure so. hope so. Yeah. I, I sure Even hope in so like too. early release or after school or something. Right. Like, I, I mean, sounds like a program that could. It's yeah, it, the um, and and the beauty is now that they've got a curriculum and they've got a, a, a routine and they have the schedule made, it's um, it could just get better every year. Right. So even if it's next summer, another camp would be great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you for that. that I was we were all psyched about it. Personnel update. So uh, you have the paper in front of you. We have three new, three new professional staff um, here on our, on our roles, and one is uh, a new special education teacher. And you remember at the end of last year that we made some changes to our hiring, and rather than um, rather than fill a couple of instructional assistant positions, we decided to put that money together and hire another special educator in the building. And that's Emily C. Field, and um, she just got started with us at the beginning of the year, and that's going great. Um, we needed a pre-K extended day coordinator. Um, it's all the other pre-Ks in the district have the same position. And that's the person who comes in a little later and stays with the kids till 5.30 because our regular day staff uh, is obviously here until 3.15. Mm -hmm. And so Caitlin is filling that role. And we did have one employee leave us, uh, Jen Bechtold, our, our PE teacher for just one year, got a four day a week job in her home community in Palmer. Oh, wow. And so obviously uh, needed to take that take that job. So we lost Jen and we were able to pick up uh, an excellent young man named Stephen Kara, who also works at Shootsbury, Shootsbury Elementary School. 
two and a half days, and he's with us two and a half days. So mm -hmm. I'm optimistic that we'll be able to keep Stephen for a while since he has close to full-time employment mm -hmm. yeah. in between two districts, and hopefully that'll be, and that's working out nicely already. Does the special ed teacher um, kind of replace Chrissy, the pre-K, because she's full-time pre-K now? Yeah, I mean, Chrissy, Chrissy will probably still expand her wings a little bit to some of the kids that, you know, maybe she's had in pre-K and wants to work with, but... Um, uh, but in a sense, yes. Yeah. I mean, anything that Chrissy might have had up above, say, pre-K or kindergarten, if she picked up any students, uh, uh, Emily and Emily and um, and Terry Anderson are pretty much splitting the building. Otherwise, you know, lower grades, upper grades, kind of thing. Terry's focused on the upper grades, Emily on the lower, and Chris will still do the IEPs for kids in pre-K and maybe one or two here and there. So we have a nice team now that can collaborate and really break down all of that work and, and lighten their load a little bit, which. Um, translates into more time and attention for each student. How is the pre-K going? Is there any update on that? Yeah, so just today we got two more um, <laughs> two more candidates. I wish Kim McCarthy, maybe we can have Kim come to a okay, meeting at yeah. some point. Uh, her, her financial projections look excellent. Okay. And, um, and starting very soon we'll have uh, yet two more kids, which will take us up to about 16 students. Um, I think we started with 14. Um, a lot of them are taking advantage of the extended day program. Mm -hmm. So, so far so good. Come see. Yeah. That's going to work out. That's great. Um, do we know how many are Waitley and how many are coming from other? Not off the top of my head. Know. Okay. Maybe next meeting you can. But it's a, it's a mix. Maybe Kim sure. can. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Will they be here in the summer or no? I forget. Is it a full year? No, they don't do summer. They only yeah. do the yeah. school year. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's it for me. Except when we get to the principal's report, I can do that. Okay. Later. So, and Lynn, do you want to talk about Yeah, conference? I just wanted to bring up the yearly conference of the Massachusetts Association of School Committees and the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents have their, un their annual joint meeting and conference at, at Hyannis. And this year it's going to be... November 1st to the 4th? Yes, Wednesday, November sure. 1st mm -hmm. to the 4th. Um, I, I won't go till, till Thursday, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but this is, uh, if you're interested, fill out the form, um, return it to the, um, to my office, to, to Donna Hathaway, my assistant, or to me, and we'll get you signed up. The, uh, we, the district will pay for your expenses if, you, if you'd like to go. Um, one of the great things about it is the chance for the school committee members and me to uh, collaborate, to meet, to, to share ideas, to, to listen, and um, you know just to get to know to get to know each other better. Um, I can share my values, my. Um, Understanding my goals, my you know, in a much more uh, relaxed and uh, meaningful way than you can do on TV in front of everyone. Mm -hmm. But I can. Uh, it, it it it's very nice. I, last year was lovely, uh, but it again it's in November. It's hard to get away, and I know that you two have already gone to mm -hmm. charting the I'm course. Saying, no, 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 it wasn't charting the course. It was the summer. It was like a summer or, condensed version. I oh, think okay. of this. Conference. It was just a two-day conference oh, okay. that Massachusetts School Committee put on and kind of review a review of it topics. Was like two hours on a Friday evening and then oh, a morning on a Saturday. Saturday. So it was good timing. But I'm signed up for this one. Oh, good, yeah. because yeah. they do I've have been, charting the course there too. Right. That's what I really need. I went there how many years ago? Five, yeah. six, seven years ago. I went down. I got a ten-year plaque and. Uh, uh, it was, you get to meet, not so much talk to uh, the superintendent while you're there, but you're talking to other, other school, school committees yeah. mm -hmm. and how big they are and how small they are yes. like us yeah. and stuff. And it's it's pretty amazing. And then the different things you can sign up for and just go to. And it's, yeah. and it was, it's full. The culminating activity is uh, we, as a, as a district, we have dinner on, um, I think it's Friday night. Not Thursday night. It's Friday night. We have a dinner, uh, just us, 
and uh, it's it's very it's just it's really nice. It is. So, but there are probably five to six hundred people there. It is crowded, mm. and uh, but very. I learned a lot last year. Um, the person with the behavior, uh, her name was Jessica. The one that you talked, we talked about her. She a was. Trainer? Yes, she was a presenter last year, and it was anxiety. Yes. Jessica Minahan. That's it, Jessica Minahan. Fantastic, and I'm telling you, the room was packed. You couldn't even breathe. There had to be, everybody at the conference had to be in that room. But she engaged everyone on a personal level. She was a mile ahead, but you just, you were just taken in by her, and she is phenomenal. So there are some great moments. And, and she talked about what's going on in a child's head when they're experiencing anxiety. When we're looking at misbehavior, they're feeling different. You know, what are they, you know, what are they feeling? So it was, so that's very good. So I'm glad that you're going. Yeah. So is this form just to sign up for the conference, or is this for something else? No, um, if you've already signed up. Um, like, what is done? When did you sign up? Um, back when the email was What's first sent. Okay. So you're all set. The summer. You're all set. Did so you make a reservation for a hotel? I haven't done that yet. Okay. You probably need to do that. Um, the best thing to do would be call my office tomorrow and talk to Donna because she's really in charge of all that, and she'll tell you how to arrange for that. Um, I, th I think I already can figure that out. We Sometimes when they get too full where, where it is, like the last time I went, I had to stay somewhere else, which mm -hmm. I was fine with and stuff, so. Me too. It wasn't that, wasn't that far away, and just drove to the conference and parked mm -hmm. away and stuff, yeah. so. And there's a group that stay, I think, from, our, from here at the Holiday Inn or something. I think Bob Decker was with me that time. You'll have fun with Bob. He goes every year. Airfield. <laughs> Airfield. So one thing that was striking at our conference, though, is the difference between the west, no, the western yes. districts and the eastern, and the challenges that people are facing. There's just like night and day. Yeah, they, you know, yeah. they're trying to build schools. They don't have enough room. We're like the opposite. <laughs> so that was really interesting, I thought. Mm -hmm. There's three different contingents in the state. There's rural schools, there's urban schools, and there's suburban schools. Mm -hmm. And we're just, we happen to be part of the rural school mm -hmm. So our needs are different. Mm -hmm. But, we but all, what's the vote that's required? You, oh. we, have to, we have to nominate, we have to nominate you to be our delegate at MASC, right? Okay. I think that's what we're is supposed what to do. Is? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so what does that to... mean besides attending? Is there some other? Is there some sort of voting? There's that's... voting going on at. Yeah, there is some voting going. I can't. I think it's the last day. There's voting uh, for different oh. different things. There's always there is every single year. So mm -hmm. um, when you come. Um, uh, next month, when you come to the joint meeting, I'll introduce you to Bob Decker. Okay. He, he knows he knows everything, and I mean, not saying you don't know everything, but he, well, he's been I to a lot. They, they he's vote. voted a lot, but we have to nominate you or appoint you. I think the chair has to appoint, appoint you to be our. If you're going, we you're a, yeah. our legal vote there from from Waitley's Elementary School, or yeah. Okay. It's they like their ask, annual meeting. They ask things like. What kind of PD would you like to see? They they offer a menu. They, they it's almost like a kind of a survey thing. Um, it's always at the end. So by then, I'm going to say, including myself, one year, fifty percent of the people, people are don't gone. Even know. <laughs> but they show you what the vote. They also publicize what they voted on um, in a booklet after after the. Uh, after the conference and stuff, they'll, they'll show what they voted on and stuff. Are they, are they voting for some officers too? Because Bob will be. Uh, I, I don't think they vote. I think they're just talking. About well, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, are you willing to be our delegate? Sure. At that meeting? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And I think we can so. vote on it. I'll make a motion to have Maureen be our legal delegate at the MA. SC conference. And I'll second that. All in favor? Thank you. Okay. So then the next 
the B, the other vote, I think, was taken. That yes. was moved to our reorg mm -hmm. discussion. So I don't really have any thing to report out. Is there anything well, else? Yes. We have to do the food service. Oh, yeah. food service report. Yep. Flory is here. I'd like okay. to introduce Flory. Flory, I don't know your last, I know it, but I don't, your Remember. last name. Page. 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 Flory Page okay. is our okay. interim uh, food service director. And do you want to come up and talk, or would you like to talk from there? Or? I can talk from here. I am part of a consulting group that goes in and works with school districts that need some support. And a colleague of mine came in June. I don't. Did they meet? Did you meet Jim Halstead, my colleague? He came. We, we heard about him. He came in and wrote a report making recommendations. And one of those recommendations was that you have some more hands-on support. So that's me. I'm here to offer the hands-on support. And I have been working with so far only Waitley Sunderland and Frontier filling in for Deb, as well as trying to take an overview of what's happening. And a very exciting thing has happened here. I don't know if you know that we now have a point of sale system here. So well, that was part of the money that we spent. Yeah. Is that up yeah. and running? Yes, yeah. it is up and running. Yes. And it's running smoothly? I it think is. So. We found a few little glitches here and there, but yes, it's running very smoothly, and it will give us some additional reporting. In fact, Peter and I talked this afternoon about some of the things it might be able to do for us that will will help with collecting past due balances and keeping parents informed. And that sounds great. It does have the potential to track allergies and do pop-up screens. If a child comes through the line who has an, a food allergy, the cafeteria worker will see a screen that tells them that the child has an allergy to do a double check on the tray. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of nice features that we're, we're still working on adding. We have the, the cash register piece working very nicely. And I sent Peter a report of who had past due balances as of last Friday. So. Wow. One of the things that we're hoping to do is to incorporate the directorship of food service from the, um, the regional and union office the same way we do IT, special ed, uh, facilities, superintendent's office, business manager, so that we'd have more consistency and um, uh, efficiency, uh, more consistency uh, with the product, with the quality, with the, f uh, the purchasing, um, making the filing with the state, the claims that they'll all be done um, out of one office, and um, the accountability. We, right now when Desi comes to um, audit us, they, we have three different kind of people who are, you know, who are, so we meet and it's three different people that, and there's different things that we have to correct on each audit, whereas if we had one person doing it for the district, we'd be able to, um, it would just be more efficient and more effective. Like to, you, to do. right? Yeah, <laughs> right. So the, and it would be paid for by student population the same way that um, the, food the food service director is paid for now but it would be even probably you know, less for because we'd be adding more, you know, more schools. So, so, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. so we're basically, with you aboard, taking care of things, we're going to try to have one menu for all five schools basically at the same time. That way we're buying in bulk, basically. Mm -hmm. and, well, and, right now, you were talking about the consortium earlier in your meeting, and that's a fantastic deal because they do the food service bid also for all of these districts. And just one particular item stuck in my head that I was looking at that was going to cost $29, and the bid price was $20. So we're seeing, yes, so we're seeing some great pricing through their food bid, and they do it for the whole range of food service products. So that's a huge advantage. My approach will be to try to improve the um, overall quality of the food, to enhance the participation, to improve the performance of the workers. My colleague mentioned at some length the meals produced per man hour, so we've done some gentle cutbacks to see if we can do both things at the same time by reducing the amount of staff time a little bit and try to bring the food quality up considerably and hopefully bring the participation in line. And we'll be able to look at that using the point of sale system. We'll be able to track that information. I know, in, I know in some schools, I'm going to take like Waitley, we only have 
two people, correct? I mean, so to cut something somewhere to do other way, I, I only ate here once late in the season last year in June, and I went through the line, and the two ladies were very nice. I thought the food, Pete and I had lunch together that day. To, I thought the food was very good. I thought it was fresh. Uh, you know, it's just, I haven't eaten a school lunch in a long time. So. <laughs> but I thought it was very nice for two people to run a, uh, a cafeteria like this. I'm not sure what happens when you get to a larger one like Frontier or Deerfield where the number of people increase. I mean, I would imagine there's downtime, and if there's downtime, that's where we're losing probably the money on the there's, downtime. There is not downtime. No. There is not. They <laughs> are really hustling from the moment they walk in the door until the last piece of equipment is cleaned and put away. And we do have the two ladies working. The point of sale system requires a dedicated person to be at that computer running the transactions as the students come through for their meal. That person also is the last pair of eyes on reimbursing, reimbursable meals. So they can't just be, you know, punching keys. They also have to be able to evaluate whether or not all of the requirements have been met by the meal. But the ladies wow. are very busy. There, there is, I have not seen downtime at any right. of the programs that I've looked at. They really are busy all the time. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I believe that we're going to ask at the joint committee in October is if um, the district can move into that direction. One district person to be in charge of all the, the lunch programs. And at that point, uh, we if, if it gets voted in at the joint committee, then what we need to do is um, look for the right person for the job. Um, Flory is an intern. She's a consultant. She's only staying to the point where we're able to make the remedies that we saw to help us figure out where where we can tighten up so that the losses, the $70,000 at Frontier, the $7,000 here, you know, the money that we're losing, that we can um, kind of close that gap so mm -hmm. we're not losing as much money. Uh, in some districts, I spoke with the uh, assistant superintendent on Friday of uh, Springfield, and they were losing a million dollars, and they had the same consultant, and now they're making a million dollars. And I, I don't, you know, the, it can be done, but it's, um, it, we need to start slow to go fast. So this is something that we're going to bring forward to you as a, as a full uh, joint committee. Do you think all the, all the schools are going to be in favor of it? Um, it's possible, but... You know, what happens if one doesn't, if we're talking about how the breakdown for paying for that individual, if, if one town decides mm -hmm. not to do it, does that mean Frontier and three of the other towns will yep. okay, split the cost? Yep. Are you going to present us with the anal financial analysis of sort of what well, the plan is? We did, we did send you the, the um, recommendations. We sent you the audit mm -hmm. and the recommendations that were found. And then we told you what we were planning to do, what the plan is, and Flory is fulfilling that plan. Mm -hmm. And as we move forward, you know, we adjust it this way or that way and um, trying to, to tweak it so that it's, it's solid. And then the idea is to get to hire someone that can um, run with the program. Yeah, but to get someone new and then try to remedy the program um, all at once is, you know, we need someone in there. And and Flory, lovely as she looks, rolls up those sleeves every day, <laughs> and, you know, sweating, and is is out there doing it too with everyone. Will she be part of the hiring process because she has experience with what we're? Yes. Okay. that's what I figured. And, yeah. and the to, training process. Yes. Yeah, and I, I have basically found that there is no, there's no, nothing for direction at all. So when we're ready to implement the new person, they'll have marching orders. You do this on Monday, and you do this once a month, and here's how you do this, and here's where you go to find this answer. So they'll have some SOPs in place by the time I'm, I'm finished. Mm -hmm. So Wavy would contribute sort of the proportion that we contribute to other things to this um, effort yeah. to the extent everybody were to participate. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, then we 
contribute a sort of bigger proportion? Well, the, the same as you have been, mm -hmm. depending on what the salary of the new person will be. Mm -hmm. But um, we have cut back the, you know, it's not a year-round position anymore. It's, it's more or less a week or two before and after, after mm -hmm. the school year and before the school year. So um, that would be um, something that would come up, but it, it wouldn't be dramatically different than what you were paying. Mm -hmm. But um, th what we're looking for now is efficiency and effectiveness, uh, quality purchasing, consistency, and um, a, a way. It's not a, it's not a problem in Waitley as much as it is in the other school, but there are some, there's some um, outstanding balances that um, we just need to, to collect. Mm -hmm. So, how, how do you? How do you? Oh. Uh, but I was just wondering: is the expectation that we would break even eventually, or is that's like, certainly, what should that's we be a goal? That's the goal. That's a goal. It is tough, it is. as you point out, when you have two people, you need to have two people, right. and you probably could do it with many more meals with two people, right. and even many doing fewer meals, you would still need the two people. So there's there definitely is an economy of scale. I mean, the day Pete and I were, were we had lunch together. You know, we talked to a couple of the kids, you know, and, you know, there's a few things that they really like. I mean, I'm a mac and cheese, I'm a mac and cheese fan from way back. I go to a restaurant, I order, I try everybody's mac and cheese once, whether it's buffalo chicken on it or whatever is on it or bacon or whatever. <laughs> Lobster. But these kids, but these kids like, I mean, like certain things and if it's, if it's feasible to give them what they like, I think we could sell more meals and I know we've done studies and mm -hmm. all that stuff but you know the kids the kids will tell you what they would like to eat I mean as long as it's somewhat healthy I'm gonna say somewhat healthy because you know we're not gonna eat granola every single day even though I eat granola but it's or yogurt but it's okay I'll just be speak quiet <laughs> <laughs> don't be quiet this is it's all very helpful but you know the kids I mean that little time we had here yeah, talking they'll tell you, they'll tell you. I mean, they you I mean, they had homemade soup that day. I'm pretty sure that was homemade soup. Everyone? That soup was oh, that yeah. soup was delicious. Yes. You know, yes, even though it was in well June, well. it was a rainy day, but it was good on that rainy day that day when I was here. I mean, it was. I told Flory that we tried our hand at a at, at a survey last year. Of course, you know, we meaning me, and right. I don't, I'm not a food service guy, but we did get good feedback from parents, and we did a scatter chart with kids too. Mm -hmm. Remember, I put it oh, on yeah. the wall here. I have oh, it for yes. you if you'd like to I see it. I would like to see it. Yeah. We, we did it on based on a different menu, but I, I think our menu has gotten a lot healthier, you know. Um, and the, the requirements right. are to serve healthier food to the children, and my, my favorite phrase is the no thank you taste. My children always had to have a no thank you taste. You can't say no thank you until you have had a taste. Right. Mm -hmm. So to have them try some new foods, is there, is but still have the old standby there so we don't send anyone away hungry. Obviously, everyone needs to be fed. Is there, is there a lot of... Is there a lot of government food out there that that we don't take advantage of, or is not a big, not for us? I mean, is there anything else that the government, you know? They they offer us a list every month that we can choose from, and the list for September's order is out right now. In fact, Kathy and I talked about it today, and we'll go through and choose the items on that list that we think are going to be popular. We're not going to take things because they're free. We're going to take things because we think the kids will eat them and then okay. incorporate them into the October menu. That's good. And also trying to be seasonal, as you said, the cold rainy day in June wow. is the anomaly, so we're going to yeah. have increasingly rib-sticking warm meals as the weather begins to cool yeah. off, where we didn't, have, we didn't have mac and cheese in September. But we probably That's will right. have it. But we probably will have I'll it in October. It. I'll, come, I'll come on a Tuesday. And have it. I'll let you know. We're making meatloaf with. Yeah. We're making meatloaf with the government ground beef on the nineteenth. So that might be a day you want to come for lunch. I'll tell you, if we lived up in the sticks of Maine, they'd be offering venison and hamburger up there for yeah. the schools. You know it's. Okay. Well, that sounds great. Yeah. I mean, it all sounds good. I guess the only thing I'm wary of is the October meeting voting on it without too much information. I think people would probably want to see more information about what the cost will be and what the goal of the whole sort of endeavor will be in terms of the loss. Did we end up with a $7,000 loss this year? Is that where, do we know? I, I, do we know? I, I, I'm not the best person. Yeah. I think that's, I'm not sure. I, think, I mean, that's what was. Jim included that in his report. Yeah. He did, yeah. yeah. And a fair amount of it is the uncollected debt because you have to cover that. It can't be a loss for the lunch program. 
Mm -hmm. It has to come from the general fund. You have to make the lunch program whole at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So the money that is not collected is coming out of everyone else's pocket. And mm -hmm. it's, not good, it's not good use of the money. And we are aggressively pursuing the application process. So if someone is having a problem, they can fill out an application at any point during the year. And the, the new direct certification is a wonderful thing where children are certified through their federal program participation. And hopefully that's going to continue to expand and take over the application process so that as people apply for those programs, they'll be certified and we won't have to do that ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think also with the new, the new system, they can pay by credit card, right? Yeah. We're almost there almost, and almost there. Okay. We're, we're getting ready and okay. as so Dr. That's, K that's as Dr. And online. I mean, yeah, as Dr. Harry said, we're taking slow, small steps to start with and we are poised to step into that arena. And there's lots of interest in it. That's, I mean, I, I think that'll be a big help for a parent to go online. Yeah. Okay, here's my debit card. So no, here's a month's, here's yeah. a month's worth of. Right now, the problem, the, the thing that's inhibiting that right now is that the uh, companies or the things we go through will charge one or two percent fee fees. of the parents. Yeah. Uh, when we use a credit card in in a store, the the company, the store pays those fees to use that card. So they actually lose money on each um, it costs sale. Them more, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, right. but schools but are not allowed to charge, or not allowed to pay for their fees. Or the is company it just we, we would go through will charge. Uh, we'd like to do it for athletics. We'd like to do it for a variety of things. Mm -hmm. And the, the so far, what we've looked at is a one or a two percent. The uh, meal charge would be a dollar ninety-five per transaction. So if you went in about lunch for tomorrow, it would cost you a dollar ninety-five to pay two eighty-five. But if you went in and bought lunches for the month, the dollar ninety-five seems like a lot more reasonable charge. And if you did it for, say, two or three months at a time, and you would be able to go in and look and see what the child's balance was, and even what they what they ate, you can go in and see how they spent the money mm -hmm. as well. The portal piece will probably be available much sooner. The other issue with the credit card piece is that you have five different banking systems. Mm -hmm. And that is very challenging as you're starting to look at implementing the, the credit card system. Where is cheaper? No, oh, you yeah. you guys are five oh. different systems. Yeah. Oh, okay. So as we're trying to put one piece together. Yeah. Five different banking? Five different towns, five different systems. And that was, that was the challenge to getting all the small schools up and running on the point of sale system. It's as if you were a huge school all by yourself. The same, same thing is necessary to enroll your hundred and what is it, hundred and forty something children as it would be if you had a thousand children. So the individ the individuality that Dr. Carey's alluding to moving away from is definitely causing complications for you. And I would argue that credit cards are not necessarily what we want to focus on. We might focus on the electronic fund transfer, which Absolutely. Is it would just be a much more um, cost effective. So you don't have to pay all those fees on top of it. Well, we, we allow people to do it online. Well, we also need to have a company that will partner with the system software that we're using for the mm -hmm. point of sale, mm -hmm. and they're brand specific, mm -hmm. so they they partner with specific companies. Mm -hmm. Although I think that all of that is becoming much more generic. Yeah. So maybe the the wait time that we're impatiently tolerating is well, worth well, it in the long run. Well, and I think knowing the balances will go a long way in getting people to just stay with them. And to to see what their child is buying to make Not sure that the school doesn't tell us, but. No, to look be it able, up yourselves. To be able to get on your computer yeah. and look and see. But we want the, don't want the kid to go hungry either. I mean, that's one thing that we're not. Well, I don't do. think they ever don't it, feed yeah, them. I, know. I think it's it more. No, I'm just saying. I mean, right. it's. No, and there's really certainly mean, a lot of that shaming right now that we don't want to be getting into at all. We don't have that. We don't have that going on at all because right. it's not about the child. It's about it's the about, parent. Right. And you can aggressively pursue the parents. Right. Okay. Good. Great. Well, that yeah. sounds good. Thank you, Thank you for your work. Yes, yes. Thanks for staying and listening yeah, to Yeah, listening to our meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, not my, it's not my first. <laughs> You're free to go, but yeah. thank you so I much. I think thank I will you. take you up on your offer. Okay. I was in for seven this morning and spent lots of time. We'll, we'll see you so. tomorrow night. I'll see you tomorrow night. Yes. Yes. I'll be at that meeting. You yeah. will indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to meet you. And nice certainly thank you don't be shy. If you have any questions, Pete has my contact information. and. You know, if something crosses your mind at 2 a.m., mm -hmm. you can write it down and contact me <laughs> by email, and yeah, I do have district has, email. Flory has a uh, um, FRSU 38 email. Oh, so. okay. Well, good. Great. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You. Nice to meet you all. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so oh, we're done we've with new business. Yeah. 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 And our vote, we've already got our policy review subcommittee person. Yeah. Yeah.
you for coming in. Thank you. So we, we are coming up with a new policy, incidentally, for food service. I'm collecting a debt. Oh, okay. Good. That's because we need to have a policy. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I don't have any report being a new chairman and chairperson. Um, uh, the collaborative, I did, don't believe there was any meeting, there were any meetings this summer. So the next meeting is coming up, but I'll connect with Maureen and let you know what's going on there. So will Donna sign Maureen up? Because I remember when I joined the collaborative, if someone needs to let them know that she's going to be the new. I will let Donna know. If Donna could let them know, and mm -hmm. then um, that will help the process get started. Thank you. Yeah, because they will. If somebody doesn't show up at least once a year, they'll start they saying, get, yeah. we do not have a delegate from your school system, and uh, we got, we do get one of those costs, so. And they get orientated, they'll give you an orientation. So, principal. Okay, good. You go and to again, your report. In the interest of time, I will indulge you and let me just walk through the report, and then if you have questions at the end, um, I'll try to be brief, because I'm a little longer than we usually are here. So um, the first item um, is a super important um, life item and uh, unfortunately also a sad item. We, um, our community experienced the loss of one of our parents recently. Two years ago we had a parent pass away as well. And of course in our, in our <coughs> faculty and, and the staff who work here, we all deal with death and dying at, at one time or another in our lives. And um, this most recent um, uh, death of a parent in, uh, has has created a situation where we feel it would be helpful for the entire community, um, not just in Whitley, but beyond um, our district, uh, to offer a forum on death and dying. And so the good people at um, um, the Garden, uh, a center for grieving children and teens, um, have offered to do uh, a panel forum for us. And you have the flyer in front of you. It's coming right up. We started promoting it today. Um, all of the other four schools, the three elementary schools in Frontier, said that they would like to promote it to their parents as well. So it will happen here, and depending on our SVP, I'm sure we'll need at least the cafeteria, maybe a bigger space, but um, they're going to come and do that forum for us, and you can see who the uh, members of the panel will be. Their format is that each member of the panel, and some of them I'm sure you know, uh, Jonathan Schwab, uh, pediatrician, I think there's a... Mike, I'm not sure that's how you spell the name, Jonathan, but oh. depends. Some people do. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he does, but yeah. that looks like a typo to me. The director of the um, of the center, uh, the garden center, will be one of the panelists, Dr. Schwab, uh, Paul Raud, who's also connected with um, the Hatfield district, and then our own Cindy Birch. Um, I think she's trying to get someone from Community and Service Options to be on the panel too. So this may get updated later. Uh, so that's going out now, and I just wanted to make you aware of that. Um, the second item on my principal's report is that we are continuing uh, with our 4-H initiative. And this one also has a date coming up very soon, October 4th, and we haven't started promoting that yet. I hope that by the middle of this week, I'll have materials going out um, across the Waitley uh, community. And we're going to invite widely, and we're going to really try to invite um, the folks who already are involved in agriculture and farming in our community to a visioning session. And what we're hoping to get out of it is, again, uh, we've talked a lot tonight about small steps. We have a garden program already that is a natural fit. Uh, we'd like to start a club that needs all of these things. If we're going to do 4-H, we need adult leaders. So that's really what we're, what we're doing is we're, we're, we're out there fishing for adult leaders who can run some of these 4-H uh, clubs. These days, 4-H does everything from uh, you know, husbandry, animal husbandry, showing animals, um, robotics, sewing clubs, gardening clubs. There is a photography clubs. There is a wide variety of things that can do, that can be 4-H. Um, and uh, I brought you some brochures as well. Thank you. Anyway, that's just there. Most recent. Uh, so Tom Muscovich from UMass um, Extension and 4-H is my partner in this endeavor here, and we, um, we're we hoping to have a visioning session on October 4th, and you should see more promo about that coming this week. And we want to start by clearly connecting our garden to a larger initiative, where we have evenings, weekends, and summertime, a club that can maintain our gardens, which we don't have now. We already have a sewing initiative here at our school that Lois has been doing for years, and whole lot of sewing machines, so we hope to establish that. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, I'm not sure what the clubs will be. It, 
It's going to be determined in part by who the leaders who step up are and what the kids are interested in doing next. But I wanted you to know that that ball is still rolling. Um, as we always do, we have school council meetings coming up. Our first one is on the 20th at 5.30. Maureen has been a part of our school council, so um, she's choosing to focus on school committee. So we'll be replacing you on the school council. We have one other member on the school council that's not going to continue. Uh, their term is over. So um, I'll be seeing PTO uh, later this week and start the process of nominations and an election if necessary. Um, there's only an election if we have more candidates than we need to fill the two spots. If we don't, then um, whoever steps up to the plate uh, will be welcomed onto the school council. And as always, the school council will focus on the school improvement plan, but also I'd like them to have a really active role in the 4-H initiative as well. And I didn't include something called Safe Routes to School. Is anybody familiar with that? It's the Department of Transportation Initiative. Sunderland Elementary has been involved with them for a long time. Um, and I want to just tell you very briefly about that because I forgot to include it. Uh, we have a representative from Safe Routes coming to do a, a few assemblies for us in a couple of weeks. It's about safety for kids who walk and or bike to school, but above and beyond, teaching them the safety you know, about safety when you're walking to school. There's also possibilities for grant money. So in some communities, they've spent a ton of money to, for example, um, redo the front of a school where they had trans uh, traffic problems that pick up and drop off. They might even, you know, could do grant money to pave a road or install sidewalks where there aren't any. Those are big projects. I'm not sure that we'll get to that in any hurry. But we're going to start by just talking to the kids about uh, safety issues around safe routes to school. And, um, and again, just wanted you to know that that was coming. How many how many kids like we ride your bike right walkers. now? We don't get a lot of walkers or bike riders, but when the weather's good, there might be 10, 12, 15 bikes out there. And oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, that's... It's yeah. become that's more popular over the years, mm -hmm. it seems like. And I think if we talk about it more, yeah. then it's good for exercise. And if we teach kids how to be safe out there and make sure mm -hmm. they have helmets. Uh, we don't have a lot of sidewalks in lately, yeah. too, which is, you yeah. know, an issue. You know, I was at um, Sunderland family. last weekend, and they have this nice path that comes right from their town to the school, like through the fields. Right. And I was sort of wondering if there was any way Waitley could have some sort of path. So, Katie, I, I, oh, through the fields would through be Through the fields, so they don't have to go on the busy roads, because that, that road I is... I think pretty, 5 and 10 is the, is the well, problem. Well, 5 and 10 is it. the problem, but just even, like, oh, there's a, a lot creative, of fields. That's a creative idea. I like that. Like, I can tell you that when this woman came to visit me... Farm roads. Already. We talked... We talked for about 10 minutes and I said, let's go outside because uh -huh. I want to show you our property, you know, and I, 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 could, I could see us at the very least having um, uh, something paved along the fence all the way to the street mm -hmm. so that when kids turn, uh, students yeah, who ride to school, the busiest part of their ride is when they turn into our driveway because that's where yeah, a so lot of people are. are. So it would be nice if there was like a bike path, asphalt path along the fence so they could mm -hmm. stay away from traffic when they're on campus. I mean, when they're out in the community, there are still safety issues, but mm -hmm. something like that would be helpful. I've often thought about whether our fire road could become uh, the bus drop off if mm -hmm. the bus went right by our front entrance and dropped off at the back. Mm -hmm. Covered. Kids get right off the bus, right into the building. You know, get rained on, which is a little benefit, mm -hmm. and then go out this way so that they're not, you know, that they're not. Cars don't have to wait for the buses to yeah. move, or parents who pass the bus with the flashing right, red lights on. You know, to. all of those things. So that's bigger, bigger picture stuff. But in the meantime, I'm glad that we've established a relationship. And I got to tell you, when um, after we did that, I got um, at least two people from Sunderland Elementary School who called me and said. I'm so glad to hear you're doing this safe routes thing. They're great, they've been great for our school. The principal and Matt Howell both, both called me and said, mm -hmm. work with this person, she's been great for us. So, yeah, it'd be great. But okay. that's a very creative idea about. Just to cut off part yeah, of the yeah. route. That'd be interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be going through private property? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe they'd be willing. They still, got, they still, gotta, they still gotta come over to four the railroad tracks. Yeah. yeah, they gotta come over rail tracks and Depending go from on where there. Coming from, right? Yeah. Maybe go through Don's backyard or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> but I think that's a creative idea. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's all I have for you. Great. If you have Thanks. any questions, I'm glad to answer them. Is there anything other than the enrollment? Is this your report? Only that uh, we've got two more pre-K kids coming this week that are not included there. Okay. But otherwise, that's accurate as of today. And two more, two more that just enrolled today. <laughs> okay. So we're up to almost 140. What does it say, 136 or something like that? So it'll be 138 mm -hmm. by the end of the week. Good. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so Superintendent Cooper, thank you, Keith. Thank you. Um, our annual uh, Frontier Regional and Union 38 staff welcome breakfast and 20 year service ceremony on Tuesday, August 29th was excellent. And um, I think most people were pleased and um, we were excited about our special breakfast because we were able to provide a hot breakfast, so that was exciting. Was that, how did that come about? Because I did hear a lot of positive reviews of the breakfast. Oh, I'm, I'm glad. I, um, from where, um, from my years of experience mm -hmm. in other districts, um, we, uh, when you're talking staff, you, you treat them well. Right. They're the ones yeah. doing the heavy lifting. Right. And I just felt, um, I asked Flory if there was something we could do, um, if they could cater. The, the breakfast mm -hmm. and the, actually the frontier regional um, people who do the um, the kitchen actually mm -hmm. work the breakfast. They so did. Oh, we did. Um, we did. I did something for them, mm -hmm. and um, also too the custodians who worked hard all summer. Where I have invited them to a, a lunch being catered by our food service, which means mm -hmm. I'll pay them to feed to have all the custodians come on August 25th at 1.30 to um, just have an appreciation That's lunch nice. and for all the hard work yeah. they did. They really worked hard this summer everywhere, every, and it was a fast summer. And I'd also like to mention Lois Lively who um, donated through community service or whatever. She made um, shades or cloth um, hangings for the for each door in the building for safety purposes when you have a lockdown the windows and the door you can't it's it's a law that they can't be covered up during the normal during a normal day because kids and go so kids come and go and if you open the door when someone's you know pulling and pushing yeah so but when there's a lockdown you have to cover those windows and she took old scraps of material what I understand and she made a covering for every door in the building mm -hmm. So I'd like to point that out, that mm -hmm. Lois did this, um, and, and she's just a treasure, so I'm Can, can I also add that while the Frontier staff did the cooking that morning, that Flory, who was just here, she mm -hmm. had on her cooking gear. She yeah. put her bandana on and her work clothes, and she was in there showing solidarity and worked with uh, the staff and served us all, which I thought up. was excellent. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. a morale boost when, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. if you're asked to work on a morning where everyone else is enjoying, yeah. at least the Your person who asked you to work is you. working right now. Yeah. Side right. by side, which I thought was really, and great. Um, and I, I, um, I, I have recognized. I will I mm -hmm. recognize that, and they're a great team. But they're a great team here too. They're just everyone's just lovely to be out, and the the food service they work very very hard. Our custodians work very hard too. So. Mm -hmm. And our IAs and our teachers, everybody works. <laughs> Central office. Anyway, so the administrative team and I. This isn't on your notes, but. I forgot to put it on and I didn't want to reprint, but the administrative team and I met last week to discuss the possibility of piloting a blizzard bag program in our district for this school year. And uh, after reviewing documents and information from other districts who engaged in the program last year, our team decided that we would like to take this school year to do more research and to develop a quality protocol that would meet the specific needs of our students. So we're still looking at the, uh, when you said it was going to be a tough winter. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, this year, our last day of school, I think, is somewhere around the 12th. So it's not as late mm -hmm. as last year was because we were able to start earlier. So last year, we had six days. Hopefully, we won't have that many this year. But um, so we're still kind of in that uh, research pattern with the blizzard bags. Um, as more and more schools go toward that, uh, we will see what, you know, how, how the accountability is and, you know, understanding that we can't replace a teacher in a classroom. However, we're missing days of learning before MCAS. Is there something we could do to provide practice at home? But then parents are busy, yeah. and they don't want to, you know, it's hard, it's a, you know, uh, it, it's kind of an imposition on them to say, well, now, you know, a busy day, the kids, whatever, and now you need to help your kids. So, um, and what we did was uh, Gateway District uh, actually had piloted last year, and they piloted with the state under the understanding that they would get feedback from all the you know stakeholders 
and then uh, present it and really shift through their data. And so uh, there were lots of pros from teachers and parents, and then there were some cons mm -hmm. from teachers and parents, and they're all very valid points. So at this point, we decided we're not going to go there yet. We're just not going to go there yet. So and the so idea is for this year. Go ahead. Sorry. You're not going there this year yet. Not this year. Um, we'll look again next year and see how many other districts pick it up. It is, um, you know, it's starting in the northern states. It's coming down, but more and more in Massachusetts are doing it, uh, especially as the winters become more severe. The weather's getting more severe everywhere. Yeah. And um, I wonder what some of the cons are. Uh, just what I said. Oh, parents, parents are working. Yeah, if you're a busy parent, you yeah. don't want to have to. Sometimes take students, depending on, and the neediest students probably don't get as much help at home because there's so many other distractions with other kids and, and this and that. Plus the uh, question of special education. How do we ensure that their accommodations and modifications are being met at home? Other schools have navigated that and have come up with answers, you know, for that and have come up with different uh, plans. And I, we went through the data and I handed the data out to the uh, administrative team, but we just don't feel ready right now to embark on that. Mm -hmm. And what about if a, if a kid did not do the work? In well, they have five days to complete the work, and if not, they get an absence for the day. So, but the idea is to keep their skills going even mm -hmm. when there's, you know, five or six learning loss days before MCAS. We keep the skills, you know, if we ask them to write or we ask them to go on a computer program and, and practice their math facts or we ask them to look at a calendar and figure out whatever. Um, but we're, we're keeping an eye on it and uh, we'll see where it ends up. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's definitely a change and uh, sometimes it's better to let other people engage in that and, mm -hmm. and, and cross the river before, you know, and then Let build a bridge. Simpl we'll yeah. Simplify it. Yeah, first. that's right. it. Well, and I then. think having expectations from the teachers for snow days is a good thing. The kids would probably listen to the teachers more than they'll listen to the parents. Right. To well, and, and, and in most schools, the teachers are available through email through electronic. for two or three hours in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's any questions, they're available for two or three hours. And they have to process the work that's done. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they're getting a free day. That's a paid day for the teachers because they are processing that right. work. They have to put it together, and then they yes. have to. Right. They have to put it together. They have to, you know, assess it. They also have to, you know, answer any emails that would come from parents. Mm -hmm. It's we decided it's much easier in the high school because they're independent learners and they have one-to-one -one computing. Right. You, they get the computers, and uh, we give them the computers, and uh, the expectations so they have are no there. Excuse, right. They have longer-term assignments. But uh, other schools are navigating it, and we can learn from their example. So, so I, it, to me, it's a little reminiscent of the early release program, mm -hmm. where the communication's out there before people really know what it is. Right. And so, I would encourage you to incl include parents early in the oh, conversation. Oh, definitely. We yeah. um, that was this. The first step was how much did we want to invest as an administrative team? Do we think it was best for our students and mm -hmm. their needs? And we, at this point, aren't ready. But the second step, of would course, be would it be, because I am going to be sending out a survey um, to all the parents at the mm -hmm. end of September, beginning of October, anyway. And I was going to add blizzard bag questions. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, after looking at all the research and all the data that we have available to us and deciding to wait is, uh, so I'm not going to You're add those kind of questions. Ask the question. No. Um, because, but th that information would be out there. We would actually mm -hmm. make sure that they understood. Is Gateway the closest? Orange, uh, Mahar does it, and Gateway, and I'd have to get, I'd have to get a list. But there are more and more schools are doing it. It's and the idea is that you have to have five snow days first, and then you. Three. You could figure that out. I or wanted three. I said so three because that would end us. That would stop us from going into a whole new week of the week of the 16th. Mm -hmm. But um, you could so do you pick whatever way. number you think is the yeah. right. But we have, you know, we have five anyway that we have in our calendar. Mm -hmm. So, and if things are going to go well, we won't need them all. <laughs>
But if this week is any indication, <laughs> cold. It's, they've uh, missed some school down there. I think for a well, while too. Yeah, could call it an emergency bag. <laughs> so um, they'll get a waiver from the state. Mm. They'll have to do something. Yeah, they that's will. That's extreme condition. Um, so that's where we are with the blizzard bags. Okay. And again, it's it's just like any topic. There's you know many people are for it, many people are hesitant because mm -hmm. it's something different and it's something we're not used to. And is it educationally sound? Well, not for every day. Absolutely not. Right. It's not a, but we'll we'll work on it. So I also attended the Waitley Town meeting on August 9th. And uh, that was great. They're a very a good group there and very nice to, uh, to talk with. And um, I was invited to attend the September 19th meeting of the Town of, Con of, Con Town of Waitley's Finance Committee, but I have the Sunderland School Committee that same night. So I will attend the Finance Committee meeting as soon as I'm done with the meeting in Sunderland. Mm -hmm. So hopefully... Probably not. Uh, I think Probably Waitley not. might go fast, but I really want. I really want. <laughs> you know, Sutherland's not going to go fast. Well, no, it's the Sutherland School Committee. It's not the Sutherland Town of Sutherland. It's the school committee. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, okay. long. Okay. But well, having said I, that, we're gonna, some of us are going to be there. I right? hope that you're yeah, going to be yeah, there so that you can so you can actually like inform me mm -hmm. because they asked for the school committee members. They didn't actually ask. For <laughs> I was. I, I, I would I would definitely be there. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it does land on a, a night where I have you know I have five five. We'll take care. Of, we'll take care of it. We'll cover it. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to be more visible in the buildings in my second year as superintendent. Pete and I have made plans uh, for me to meet and visit the school building, visit classrooms every two weeks. My long-term goal uh, will be each week next year. Mm -hmm. But as I, I get a little more um, adept at, at my job and, and knowing all the players and all the, uh, the cycle of things, um, I'd like to spend more time with the kids mm -hmm. and the teachers and where mm -hmm. all the fun is. And having said that, a superintendent's first year is always to go slow, learn the lay of the land, understand the values and traditions of the district, and to make a vision and strategic plan for moving the district forward. I have taken this seriously, uh, and I'm excited to present our vision, our strategic plan for the next two years that the administrative team has worked on for months with me. I'm going to present that at the October Joint School Committee meeting uh, on October 5th at 6 o'clock at Frontier Regional School. Okay. So we have three yeah. main goals of three main um, strategic plans, and it's curriculum, assessment, and special ed. So we're really excited about that, and the team has helped me develop that. That's my. Right. Make a motion to adjourn if, if she's all done, unless you have anything else. I have nothing else. No need. You got enough notes things. there tonight? Your first night? <laughs> <laughs> Who second? Second. I second. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Thank you, 745. Yes.